Hello everyone, welcome back to my floor. I have been wanting to do some art challenges. I feel like no art YouTube channel is complete without them. They give you an opportunity to flex your artistic skills in different areas, especially untested areas. They limit you in certain ways so that you have to think outside the box. It was actually really difficult for me to narrow down which one I wanted to do as my first challenge because there are so many out there, but I didn't want to pussyfoot around with just like a very simple challenge, so I decided that this week I am going to attempt doing various types of artwork with my left hand. Left hand or non-dominant hand art challenges are abound on YouTube, and I have experience writing with my left hand. I practice it every once in a while, so I know I have some level of ambidexterity. I can kind of write like an eight-year-old, basically. Like, my handwriting isn't the best and it takes me a long time to do it, but I think I can write pretty legibly with my left hand. But I haven't really ever tried drawing with my left hand, or coloring, or even painting with my left hand. Why don't we do that this week? Why don't we do a few preliminary practices with my left hand so that I can show you how well I can write or draw basic shapes? Then we can move on to a drawing that I can do. Um, I think I'll choose colored pencil for this. I think that would be interesting to test to see how how dexterous my left hand is at getting different sort of pressures with the colored pencil and different depths of color. And then finally, because it comes the most naturally to me and I really wanted to try it anyway, I'm gonna attempt painting an acrylic painting with my left hand. This should be fun. I hope you're going to enjoy. I hope I gain something out of it too, actually, because I think this would be an interesting marker to see how well I'll do if I ever really wanted to continue doing art if for some reason I injured this hand. We don't want that to happen, I'm just saying, what if? Please join me on this journey, sit back, relax, have a cuppa, and watch me flounder. Hi. Okay, so I have here in my possession just an ordinary lined pad of paper. I'm going to start my exercise by doing some writing samples. Usually what I do when I practice writing with my left hand is I practice writing the alphabet. So first I'm gonna start with my normal drawing hand, or writing hand. Yes. Yes. And this is actually a fairly decent exercise to do on lined paper because the lines and staying within the lines will be a metric for how well I can actually perform with my left hand. And you guys get to see what my handwriting normally looks like. Oh, X. <laughs> I forgot what order letters go in. <laughs> okay. So there's my alphabet. I'm gonna turn the pad of paper this way, and oh man, we are casting quite a dramatic shadow. I should have my light on in the other direction, but I don't have an outlet over there. All right, sorry guys. You will see it come into form as I'm writing it out. Oh, this is already pretty rough. <laughs> it has been a while since I have practiced this. I can tell because this feels harder than it was the last time I tried. I seem to be doing okay so far. I'm staying within the lines okay, but my hand is a little wibbly. Drawing perfectly straight lines and perfectly round curves is just not as easily achieved with my left hand. And this time I am remembering what order the letters go in. Ow, <laughs> my hand already hurts. <laughs> so here we have right hand. And here we have oh, left hand. <laughs> Sometimes I can't even write with my right hand. <laughs> now that we've covered the alphabet, I thought that maybe I would practice doing basic shapes. So we should start out with a heavy hitter, and that is a circle, and then a triangle, a square. Right hand is having a hard time drawing a square. Um, I might do like one of these basic star shapes and maybe we'll put a smiley face inside the circle. And how about the most classic doodle, just a daisy. So we have some basic shapes here and now it is going to be up to my left hand to try to recreate these shapes. I'm not going to do them left to right, I'll probably do them in the order that I originally drew them. So we're gonna start with the circle and I am scared. Oh, you know what? I think I'm approaching this wrong. I think because I'm going lefty, yeah. Going, curving around from the left and doing it clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Seems to be working out a little better. How are we gonna do on this triangle? 
To be honest, not bad. Oh my gosh. I'm genuinely shocked. I mean, it's a little wobbly, but it is the triangle and it's actually got pretty decent angles. Not too bad on the square. Let's try the star. <laughs> I mean, it's a star. And to be honest, it doesn't look any bigger or smaller than this star. I just, I, I missed the mark on the last connecting pieces. Oh yes, and then the next step would be fill in the smile looks pretty nice and now for something just a little bit more detailed our clever daisy Ooh. oh wow that didn't turn out that bad this definitely isn't an easy challenge but it's still not as hard as i thought it would be i do realize that when i'm doing things with my non-dominant hand that i have to move slower if i want more accuracy so now that i have my first test completed and we've gotten some writing samples out of the way it is time to draw now i haven't really decided what i wanted to draw yet i was hoping it would just come to me i didn't really come prepared maybe if we tried a different camera setup let's do that real quick Okay, so I just turned my table in the other direction and now I'm sitting from over here, so now when I draw with my left hand, there won't be a big obnoxious shadow going across my paper, it'll be going in the other direction. I can't do something just super simple, like something akin to a kid's drawing, because I feel like that would be kind of a cop-out. But I do want to warm up a little bit, so I thought that maybe if I drew some basic shapes... Oh man. I mean, thankfully I'm just in the sketching phase right now, but uh, I forgot I can turn my paper a little bit and that will help me out. Here we go. There's an apple. Actually, let's smooth this side out a little bit. Yeah, there we go. I feel like a really hard one would be cherries. These cherries are deformed. Ugh, and if I want to erase, I also have to do that with my left hand. <laughs> what if I did... Do I remember what like the cross section of an orange looks like? Oh, that's a tiny orange. <laughs> Maybe this is actually more of like a clementine. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, it's just so wibbly wobbly. <laughs> Does that look like an orange? This isn't just my left hand's problem. It's also my brain's problem. I didn't look up a reference. Oh, I know that we need to have the skin on the outside of the orange. Oh God, I feel so sorry for this fruit. And then maybe, you know, a lemon. There's a, str a straw. Should I draw the seeds? I guess I have to draw the seeds. So many little seeds and I still feel like I'm not even drawing them small enough. All right, so we have a fairly decent selection of fruit. And I feel like at this point, I should try coloring them in. Maybe I might make this a lime instead of a lemon because we have a banana and I don't want you two yellow fruits. So I'm gonna start with my nanner and do my best to color in the lines. Oh God, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Getting a little too crazy. We do have this very attractive lime green color so we can use that for the lime. Oh, stay in the lines, you can do it. This one I think is gonna be the hardest, the orange because of how detailed I did inside of the cross section. Should I just color in all of the center? I think I have to. I can go over it in the other areas with a different color. My visual memory of what the inside of an orange looks like is shaky at best. But the added challenge of drawing with my non-dominant hand, I think kind of makes it worse. And these are tiny, tight little spaces that I gave myself. <laughs> This is hard. The thing is that like instinctively, I want to color faster because that's how I normally do things. Especially for just little sections like this. Like my right hand would be just like filling them in at rapid fire speed, but I can't do that. <laughs> Posing great frustration. Now, before I move on to the cherries and the apple, I want to finish coloring in this line. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I'm losing control of it. It's just kind of going wherever it wants to. Oh no, no. I might try to erase that. Ugh, it hurts. <laughs> Ow. Ugh, I'm going in with an even darker green for some even deeper shadows. Here you go, nice attractive lime and a semi-attractive orange. Oh yeah, I wanted to go back in on this banana, kind of give it, what sort of color is this? Oh no, that's not the right yellow. Yeah, it's this one. That one was a little bit too like pastel and peachy. Oh. Oh, it hurts. So something to note about the way that I hold my pencils, my pens, my paintbrushes, etc., is that ever since I was a kid, 
I've held them, resting them on the third finger or the ring finger. And as a result, I've developed quite a callus on this finger over the years from drawing and writing. Now, I've been told in the past that that is the improper way to hold your pencil, so naturally, I want to hold it with my left hand in the same way. But I'm gonna try to switch it up and put it on my second finger here. Oh, okay. That's, that is giving me, yeah, that's giving me just a little bit more control. It feels wrong somehow, but it's working better. I kind of want it to have like some areas of ripeness. Oh no. <laughs> I keep going outside of the lines. Help. Okay. Everything's fine. We're good. Dang it. I did it again. I mean, it's hard enough to erase ordinary colored pencils. Try doing it with your non-dominant hand. Crap. Did it again. Eh. Good enough. Ugh. All right, we have one slightly freckly banana. Okay, let's move on to the cherries. It seems to be a little less intimidating than this apple. I'm gonna start with this just like crimson red. Oh, I didn't leave a shine spot. I'll just put it there. I wasn't paying attention. I was just kind of going all in. Oh my goodness, this is hard. Such tiny circles. Oh no. <laughs> I don't like it. Okay, we're just gonna make that cherry slightly larger to compensate and we can pretend it never happened. Oh my god. Gravy! I'm going around with this darker red. Once again to deepen my shadows. I'm pressing really, really hard. I feel like the harder I press with the pencil, the easier it is to get control, but it also means that's how my hand cramps. I don't actually want to like injure my left hand doing this challenge. That would be horrible. I am just gonna go in with a plain black here for my stems. Ugh! Ugh! <laughs> I just threw the pencil. <laughs> My grip isn't strong enough, but we have to give our stems a home. Is this the same red? Yeah, it is. Ah! I just, I mean, like, it's just so difficult. Every once in a while, I'll be doing really well, and I'll be coloring in certain areas, and everything will be fine, and then just one stroke will go rogue, and I don't know, I don't know how to rein it in. Calm down, left hand. I know you're excited. This is your time to shine, but... Sheesh. And then strawberries, I feel, are more of this color red, which is brighter. Yeah. Posing even more of a challenge than the orange with the little segments that I have to go around, but I feel like I'm pretty warmed up at this point and I'm doing a little bit better for the strawberry. Well, okay, I take that back. The truth is I'm not just doing this for the views either. I really wanted to see how good I could do things with my left hand. And I think on a broad scale, so far, I'm not doing half bad. It's just the frustrations involved with drawing with a hand that just doesn't have the strength, the agility, the finesse of the other hand, which is perfectly fine and sitting next to you this whole time. But on the other hand, it is kind of also motivating me to continue practicing drawing with my left hand because that could be cool and it could be handy someday. You never know. I do think that so far though, the strawberry is the weakest link just because it looks the least refined. And I still keep trying to switch my pencil back to the third finger, even though I established earlier that this finger seems to be offering a little bit more control. A little bit. Now I left that pithy part in the center kind of white and it looks a little bit sloppy so I wonder if I should fill that in with something. Where's that weird peachy yellow? Oh here it is. This one called jasmine yellow. Yeah it's all right. Okay I saved the biggest and probably the most complicated for last because we already have two red fruits. I didn't want to do an entirely red apple. I felt like that was going to be you know just a little bit too samey with the rest of the images present here. So I want to do an apple that that is both red and yellow. Those are actually some of my favorite varieties of apples, like honey crisps and pink ladies and stuff like that. Like they have a very light red color and then they fade into a yellow. This time I'm going to remember to separate a shine line here. Actually, but we'll put a second one there for good measure. <laughs> that might be too shiny an apple, but we're just gonna roll with it. This part's gonna be a light red and I'm gonna try to actually like keep my pressure light. Going in, we're going in deep. And I feel like 
there's often like a big splotch of red in apples like this, and then it'll immediately like be right next to a patch of yellow. So let's get this part in. And to be honest, I was liking the look of this jasmine yellow and it's, yeah, that's a really pretty color. It's almost just pink enough. Like it's odd to think of a, a yellow that has pink in it. It's actually pretty perfect. And you can just see so many of the strokes. Ah, I am being a perfectionist. I am aware of this. I don't know. I just wanted to make pictures that were pretty okay. The thing is, I'm not actually sure how much this is giving the impression of the kind of apple that I'm used to seeing that looks like this, or if it just kind of looks like I'm badly coloring an apple. <laughs> I'm actually wearing the tips of these pencils down faster using my left hand. <laughs> I should have expected that to happen, actually, because I have to press so hard. Does that look right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How am I doing, folks? Crap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't like when this happens. I was doing so well. <laughs> it always seems to happen in this area, too. See, because it happened over here on this side of the banana. What's going on? I'm sensing a pattern. I should stop giving myself crap for this because in all honesty, I could have done way worse. There you go, a little apple stem. Create a little shadowy area for the stem to sit. I like that, I, I do. I think all things considered, this is a pretty decent drawing of some fruit. It was a lot more challenging and I can't believe I thought I was gonna do something far more detailed than this for this initial drawing with my non-dominant hand. I mean, what else would I be able to draw? I don't think I trust myself doing a face with my left hand. Should I try it? Maybe I should just try drawing one and I don't have to color it in. Wait, you learned going clockwise when you're left-handed. We're just gonna make our eraser our best friend for this exercise. Let me come down. There's our chinny chin. Oh God, I'm just butchering the lines. Come on now. Come on now. So there's the just center of the face. <laughs> There's our brow line. There's an ear. Oh my god. Stop it. <laughs> Drawing some brows. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I have no control. <laughs> There's the bridge of the nose. What kind of nose should I give this person? Should we do like a cute little button nose? Aw, that's nice. That turned out okay. I'm scared of the eyes though. I am scared. Okay. Ah! All right, that's not so bad. And then whenever I draw eyes on like faces, I always have to give them the upper eyelid. I feel like I'm like holding my breath a lot or making grunting noises. No, <laughs> her cute nose. I'll save it, I promise. Okay, we have to give her a neck. <sighs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> uh, what kind of heritage do we want her to have? Should we give her like one of these like side part dudes with some bangs? And then just long straight hair to keep it simple. All right, that part wasn't so bad. I like doing the long strokes. Now let's see how deft I am at releasing, releasing? erasing <laughs> some of these pencil lines from the center of her face as best as I can. And there we go. There we have our girl. She looks very stern and a little bit wall-eyed, but I mean, <laughs> all things considered, I think she's kind of cute, you know? Should I color her? Yeah, why not? I'm going to color her. I feel like a jerk because whenever I see art YouTubers doing this challenge, I always think, what a bunch of babies. And it's not even that hard to draw with your non-dominant hand, but I've been sitting here for, I don't know, an hour now drawing this. And I assure you, my hand is cramping up something terrible and I don't feel good about it. I feel like an idiot for assuming that I would be fine. And I also just feel a bit like a butt face for saying that in my head and now out loud to all of you about other people trying to do this challenge because frankly, it's pretty tough. So I want to offer an apology, all art YouTubers that have tried this and sat there and complained and made a bunch of sounds because now I'm doing it and I understand your pain. I'm very sorry. Ugh. It's a workout. Trying to get some mid-tones in this hair. I think the problem is that I was actually more optimistic about how I was going to perform <laughs> in this challenge. <laughs> the truth comes out. <laughs> I forgot her eyebrows. And there's this, this color in here that's called coyote brown and it's a very hazily green color. So there you go, honey, you get hazel eyes. And I'm gonna do that cheap trick that I used to do when I was a kid drawing eyes and just not completely fill in the pupil. Add the highlight on the eye so that they're just like 
little crescent moons. Now, they gave us this color called peaches and cream, which is generous because I don't really feel like doing a whole lot of effort into coloring in a skin tone or mixing a skin tone during this challenge. This is, this is already quite hard, but I will change up my various coloring pressures. I'm concentrating so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't kidding earlier when I said that I think I draw like an eight-year-old. Shout out to eight-year-olds. But I'm just saying, just like someone in elementary school, that's about kind of what I have going on with my non-dominant hand here. I know that, that I can't use that as a blanket statement because there are some very talented eight-year-olds and there are some also some people older than me who don't know how to draw at all. So I don't want to be unfair to people's various levels of skill. However, I do kind of just feel because of my lack of dexterity and control, that this is kind of how like the average child draws. Like imprecise, really only because they don't have like the muscle build up in their extremities yet. Well, not necessarily good or bad. I'm sure I'm doing pretty good by some people's standards. There you go. She's pretty cute, right? I'm gonna go in with a purple here. I know I said I wasn't gonna get too crazy with her complexion, but I do feel like often when I'm doing portraits, I end up using like a purple as a shadow color on skin. Purple just in general makes a very good shadow color. Okay, if I sit back and look at this, I don't hate it. In fact, it looks pretty good. So I would say that that concludes the first two rounds of the left hand drawing challenge. Tomorrow I will come back and I'm gonna try my very hardest to complete a painting using only my non-dominant hand. I am going to do a portrait because that is my bread and butter and I feel I must default back to the, these things because I need to have something to compare it to. Painting is a whole other animal than drawing. You still need to have some dexterity and control in your fingers and in your wrist and stuff like that but the result is going to look a little bit different and for some reason my preconception of this idea is that it will be more forgiving if i make a mistake because people like messy brush strokes i might just be projecting but that is the impression that i get <laughs> I will let you be the judge, and frankly, I think I'm looking forward more to that than I was to drawing these things here today, but in the spirit of keeping it real, I just wanted to be able to say that I did this first. Get her some nostrils so she can breathe, and hell, let's give her some eyelashes. Yeah, girl. And I may not do too bad, considering how I did overall pretty well today, if a little sloppy at times, but I guess that was to be expected. I might actually succeed a lot better and be more satisfied with my result with a painting than I was with a drawing. So, I will see you then. Okay, day two. I'm determined to approach this with a slightly better attitude. <laughs> I apologize for all of the whining that you've had to put up with so far, but I appreciate it if you've stuck around to this juncture. I can say that after drawing extensively and coloring in things with my non-dominant hand last night, that there is uh, no longer a pain in my hand, but kind of a cramp in this sort of area of my forearm, so whatever muscles I was clenching up here in my hand and my wrist sort of radiated down. So I have a canvas prepared. It's actually a canvas board because I couldn't bring myself to sacrifice a full-size canvas for this. And uh, it is the smallest size that I own in my collection. So it's like eight by 10, I think. And I thought that that was good because we're really just sort of messing around here today. But I traced a lady's face onto this canvas board. You can see her right there. I did do that part with my right hand. I hope you'll forgive me for that. My extent of drawing with my non-dominant hand was pretty painful and I didn't know if I trusted myself to do it, but also that's not the point of the challenge today. The point is to see how well I can paint with it. I'm going to sit and paint away for as long as I possibly can. And if it gets too painful, I am gonna have to stop because I really just don't wanna injure myself. Two nights of non-dominant hand use after years of dormancy <laughs> seems like a recipe for ouch. But I do wanna see if it comes a little bit easier than drawing because I don't feel like I hold my paintbrush quite as hard as I do something like a pencil. So here we go, we're gonna do the thing.
Painting with my left hand was, just as expected, pretty simple. I mean, there were some areas of difficulty, mostly that I couldn't really stabilize that tiny little canvas board. It kept moving around because I wasn't quite as deft at getting my pressure <laughs> against the canvas the same all the way around so sometimes I'd press too hard and the thing would move and I'd have to readjust and start again so that's one part it was also somewhat difficult for me to mix my colors with my left hand which was something that I was trying to do throughout not that it was impossible it just took a lot longer and I was a little worried that my paints were gonna dry out faster because I wasn't working as fast as I usually do. And every time I would try to clean my brush in my water bucket, my hand would get wet because my grip wasn't quite right. So I kept dipping my hand straight into the water. Every so often I'd find myself holding up my left arm to support it because it was starting to get a little painful to keep my arm raised like that, which is something that I experience with my right hand as well. But usually that happens to me when I'm doing a much larger canvas and when I've been painting for a much longer period of time. Time. It makes sense that I would have this problem with my left hand just because it doesn't have the muscle build up in it yet. The only areas of true difficulty I had where there were instances where I had to go back over my work and correct mistakes were in small tight spaces like in the eyes, around the nose, and on the mouth. So I can't say that I'm very surprised by that, but I did have a lot of fun painting the hair. The hair was very fun and fluid and involved a lot of really long brush strokes that I painted using my full arm and not just my wrists. So I think they came out really well. I'm hot, my face is flushed, but god darn it, I did it. She's a little rough around the edges, but I think that she's beautiful. <laughs> and honestly, what a good effort. For someone who's not primarily left-handed, this is about as good as it's gonna get and gives me a lot of hope that I can rely on my left hand in the future should something come up. I had done this on one of my small practice canvases just as an experiment, but I don't think I'm going to be painting over her anytime soon. I do want to keep this as kind of a record of my accomplishment. And I definitely think that I did better on this than I did on my drawing. So there is hope. There is hope for me. <laughs> Thank you all so very much for joining me on my adventure here today. I hope you have enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself at the very least towards the end of this exercise. Yesterday's drawing exercises, maybe not so much, but once I got into my true love which is painting that's when I really started to have more fun and feel a little bit looser and like I had built up some strength in my left hand so that's pretty cool if you enjoyed what you saw today please consider giving me a thumbs up I would appreciate it I suffered for my art this week <laughs> and subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit that notification bell while you're at it so that you can see me when I upload again and until I see you next time for our next art adventure ciao everyone